Oh, hi. Can we please give a huge round of applause for um, our graduating cohort of MAS students? You all must be massively exhausted. I've been watching them toil um, arduously over the year, and I just am, have been, I'm so proud of uh, the presentations and have seen so many iterations um, of these presentations and of these projects, and you have no idea how far, um, how far they've come. Um, a number of you have come up to me today to um, tell me that you've been anticipating my closing remarks, and it made me worry that you're like expecting a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> and although it is Pride Weekend, there will be no costume changes. Um, uh, but, um, and I am funny like Isabella, but uh, today's, today's uh, <laughs> remarks are unequivocally unfunny, kind of sentimental. Um, okay, so 10 minutes, I timed it. Um, so my name is Patty Ann, I use they, them pronouns, um, and I had the distinct honor of co-chairing the program this year alongside Dr. Gregory Rouse under Samantha Murray's directorship. Um, and so, since today's Tapstone presentations mark the end of my inaugural, inaugural year in the position, um, I thought I would offer some closing remarks and reflections on my experience and observation over the past 12 months. Um, first, a bit of context about myself for those of you who don't know me, and I apologize if this is, um, this is gonna be redundant info for those of you who do. Um, I'm a teaching professor in the Department of Communication at UCSD and teach courses on global culture, media activism, documentary filmmaking, and community-based storytelling. I'm all over the place, largely because I have such a checkered and sort of um, varied background and, and set of trainings. Um, although I'm formally trained as a, as a researcher and scholar, um, my expertise is not in marine sciences, science, as you can guess. Um, however, like many of the students who make their way through the doors of this program, I see myself above all else as an activist with an abiding commitment to building a more just, equitable, and sustainable world. Um, as a scholar, I've spent years studying how media systems have actively thwarted the fulfillment of this vision. But as a filmmaker and activist, I've learned how we, as everyday people, can wield the media forms and strategies used by these very systems to, to disrupt power, shift public consciousness, move people to action, and imagine a different future. Um, over the past decade, I've been working to bring my scholarship activism and media praxis into closer alignment, exploring how I might use documentary storytelling in particular uh, to communicate core social issues in my research to as diverse an audience as possible, not just academic ones, uh, appealing to their hearts as well as their minds. Um, and as much as possible, I use the classroom as a space to impart these skills to students who share similar visions, goals, and curiosities, which has led me to this place in front of you. Uh, when Samantha asked, uh, invited me to co-chair last spring, I eagerly accepted the offer, not only because I was thrilled by the idea of immersing, immersing myself in an entirely unfamiliar field of knowledge, um, but I was also drawn to the program's commitment to social justice. Um, while I'm not sure how anyone can commit myself to the work of conservation without having some sense of a moral commitment to equity, I sense that Samantha really prioritized this ethos under her stewardship and saw, um, a sense that she saw my multidisciplinary and po political oriented approach to knowledge production uh, as a chance to expand students' cultural perspectives and sense of what's creatively possible. And while I sincerely hope that I've been able to do this in some way, shape, or form for all of you this year, uh, I admittedly feel like I'm walking away having received much more from this experience than I gave to it. Uh, since embarking on this journey with you all last summer, when I led a soul-crushing week-long crash course in filmmaking and <laughs> science communication, I think you might all still be psychologically recovering from that, sorry. Um, I have learned so much from you. Um, for one, you taught me that one cannot reasonably learn how to make a film in a week, <laughs> lol, lol. Um, we're modifying the summer curriculum based on your feedback. Thanks for your input and also bye. <laughs> <laughs> but you also, uh, as I had hoped, took me outside of my comfort zone and introduced me to new vocabularies, concepts, and fields of study. Through your research, I have learned about the advantages and perils of ecotourism around the world, from the Maldives to Baja, Mexico, Mexico, and the myriad social and environmental impacts of various fishing practices, including on our local and international food systems. I've also learned how and why existing marine conservation policies in the absence of robust management plans have failed to protect vulnerable marine life and ecosystems in the Philippines, Cabo Verde, Peru, and California's coastlines. Do I sound like I know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I've come a long way, trust me. Um, I didn't even know what an MPA was in the beginning of the year. Um, beyond what I learned from your research findings, um, I've been constantly moved by the imaginativeness and fortitude with which you have pursued, developed, and communicated these new knowledges and data sets. Some of you have written papers, while others have created databases, story maps, documentary films, a graphic novel, a board game, and even a virtual reality experience, all with an eye toward shifting policies, scholarship, and public opinion, in most cases ambitiously pursuing some combination of the three, these three things all at once. 
Um, responding to a moment of nervousness I felt at the beginning of the year about what I could possibly offer you all as a non-specialist, my esteemed and very sage coach here, Dr. Rouse, who promised to name a sea worm after me, um, <laughs> reminded me, remember, we don't need more scientists. We have enough of those. We need people who will think outside the box. And you all have proven to do just that this year, demonstrating how much we have to gain from being outrageously creative about the way we approach and represent the complex nexus of issues, factors, solutions, and potential outcomes at the heart of our discussions about the current climate crisis. Uh, you especially have shown how powerfully art and storytelling can be used to engage the public about the ocean and allow us to make unexpected connections between natural and social processes that traditional scholarship might not allow. Um, without art serving as a bridge, how would we have considered what autism has to teach us about the deep sea and vice versa, or how rhyoscopic fluid might visualize the turbulent processes of planktonic dynamics? Blah, wow. Um, I killed it. I'm like a rapper. Um, we might also have never had the opportunity to hear the wisdoms of elder ocean scientists as they reflect on the failures of their generation, or why fishing communities in Agua de Puerto Rico have reserved, uh, preserved the indigenous practice of Yolo boat making and what we stand to lose in its erasure from historical and cultural memory. Um, as I might remind, it is also art and storytelling that has bridged us, that have bridged us, bringing you, students of marine science, and myself, a filmmaker and film educator, in our respective disciplines into direct conversation. Never in a million years did I think I'd find myself here, and yet we share a deep understanding of the urgent need to shatter institutional convention and divisions and build untraditional alliances and ways of exchanging knowledge. We are in fact building a different future together in this very moment and have been all year. You have executed a truly impressive cross-section of projects done of course with the support of your devoted advisory committee, especially your chairs who push you to think expansively while honing the stakes, arguments and interventions of your research. At times you've had to navigate conflicting or difficult input from them as well, as well as from your own beloved director and co-chairs. Sorry, I'm not sorry. Um, <laughs> all of you have had to make at least some dramatic adjustments to your plan along the way. No doubt many of your projects look quite different from what you had, imag had imagined in the earliest stages of your proposal. However, in the end, you made choices that stayed true to your own vision, carving a path that distinctively represents your unique voice and perspective. And hopefully in the process, you learn how to be just a little bit more compassionate with yourselves and let go of some of the perfectionism and self-criticism that often bind us from taking risks and committing to the ideas that matter to us most out of fear of falling short of their potential. Uh, I hope you continue to hone your voice as you transition into the next phase of your life and the rad careers that await you in a variety of fields. If it isn't evident yet, we need you and have always needed you to show up unapologetically and radically as you in these spaces, especially those of you who are BIPOC, neurodivergent, disabled, queer, trans, and non-binary. If ever you are seized by a bout of imposter syndrome, and I hope not, but it comes up, uh, just remember that if I can be co-chair of a master's program in oceanography, you can do and be anything. Um, <laughs> Uh, I know the accelerated nature of this program has been exhausting uh, and at times taken a toll on your mental health. Um, academia just does that to us all. Um, but I've been truly moved by the ways you've shown up for and taken care of each other through the worst of these moments, both as a larger cohort and in the smaller communities you've created and nurtured together. As a community organizer, I've learned that one must begin the work of addressing systemic issues by changing the way we show up in our own relationships. After all, how can we even begin to imagine a more sustainable way of inhabiting this planet if we can't even practice mutual care and interdependence in our own friendships, collaborations, and communities? I am so grateful for the space of belonging that you all, Samantha, Hannah, and Greg, have created for me as an intellectual outsider. Thanks for not laughing at me when I had no idea what you are talking about. Um, and someone in the social margins of academic culture um, for a number of reasons. Uh, Samantha, thanks especially to you for always pushing the envelope of what this program can and should be, not least of which a culturally sensitive space to explore, falter, and be each other's champions. Wherever you all land, I encourage you to continue building environments where people from non-traditional backgrounds, experiences, and perspectives can thrive as you and I have. Um, but before leaving, I also encourage you to take a few mo moments to reflect on how and when you could have done better on this front, and we always can. Um, when you could have turned uh, toward rather than away from conflict or taken the initiative to slow a conversation or process down in order to make it more accessible for others. Um, what cultural assumptions might you still carry that are rooted in racism, heterosexism, classism, and colonial narratives about the global South, and what work will you do to undo that? Um, but also reflect back on your successes, moments when you surprised yourself with the power, powerful gestures of support you showed for others and or major strides you made in your own decolonization process. How can you all translate all of this into a commitment to changing the culture of how we collaborate, build community, and conduct activist-oriented research in the future? 
This past year should have taught us all that, that the journey, the process, and the values we bring to our work can be as transformative as their outcomes. And it has been a truly exciting and life-changing experience, and I mean that, um, learning from and alongside you. Um, hopefully you stumbled on as many glimmers of joy and laughter as you did mind-blowing revelations um, I, uh, along the way. I certainly laughed a ton this year, both within and beyond the classroom, although you all <laughs> did make me sweat that time you asked me to do a 45-minute Ask Me Anything session. Um, maybe a good lesson on boundaries. Um, but in exchange, you let me process endlessly about dogs, astrology, K-pop, and terrible reality dating shows. Have you all watched the Creole Ultimatum? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Get on it, you're not above it. Um, I am a firm believer that nothing is worth doing unless it is sufficiently fun, and if it isn't already, we can always find ways to make it so. Uh, perhaps this is why I'll always remain just a little too improper and irreverent for academia, um, yet you all saw the importance of this philosophy too, and the value of distraction to the learning and expo exploration process. And I thank you for that. Um, I promise, I'll leave you with just a few words, I promise to never apologize for being myself as long as you promise never to do, uh, promise to do the same. Um, so please keep trusting your gut, following your hunches, thinking outside the, the box, and believing that another world is possible. I can't wait to see what comes next for all of you.